Imagine a country on the verge of becoming one of the wealthiest nations per capita on Earth. A country with a gusher of newfound riches pulled from deep beneath the ocean, promising a future of unbelievable prosperity. Now, imagine that in this same country, just flipping on a light switch is a roll of the dice. The power flickers and dies, and the drone of a diesel generator becomes the soundtrack to your day. This isn't some made-up story. It's the wild paradox of modern-day Guyana, a nation whose explosive economic growth is chained to a rusty, unreliable power grid. For decades, Guyana has been hit with chronic blackouts and some of the highest electricity costs in the region, a reality that's held back progress and driven its citizens crazy. But a massive change is coming. Deep in the heart of the country, a project of incredible scale is taking shape, one designed to completely rewire the nation's future. This is about more than just keeping the lights on. This is the story of a massive $422 million bet on the future. It's an investment not just in steel and cables, but in a total national makeover. Guyana is building the backbone for its huge gas-to-energy project a network of new transmission lines and substations made to handle the very gas that's fueling its economic miracle. The mission, to finally stabilize the country's power supply, slash electricity costs in half, and kickstart a new era of growth. This is the story of how a nation is trying to turn its offshore oil wealth into real, onshore power for its people, and the giant hurdles it has to clear to build a gas-powered future from scratch. To really get why this is such a big deal, you have to understand the daily grind Guyana is trying to leave behind. For decades, the national utility, Guyana Power and Light, GPL, has been fighting a losing battle. The country's power grid is an old, fragile network that's been neglected for years. Prime Minister Mark Phillips admitted the system is suffering from a long history of underinvestment and poor maintenance, leaving it brittle and prone to constant breakdowns. The result is a system you just can't count on, with total losses hitting a shocking 40%, thanks to a mix of technical problems and electricity theft. This isn't just annoying. It's a massive weight on the economy. Businesses have to rely on expensive, private diesel generators, which drives up their costs and makes them less competitive. For regular folks, the price of electricity is brutal a direct result of the country depending almost entirely on imported heavy fuel oil and diesel to make power. This addiction to foreign fuel doesn't just leave Guyana at the mercy of shaky global prices, it drains the country's foreign reserves. And the demand for power? It's exploding. As Guyana's oil-fueled economy booms, so does its hunger for electricity. In just one year, between September 2024 and September 2025, peak power demand shot up from around 180 megawatts to over 221 megawatts. And it's not slowing down. Projections show that the Demerara Berbisi interconnected system, the country's main grid, will see its peak demand jump from 205 megawatts in 2024 to an expected 250 megawatts in 2025. This crazy growth is putting huge strain on a system that's already at its breaking point. In 2024 alone, GPL got requests from almost 14,000 new customers. Without a radical change, the nation's growth engine would sputter, starved for power. The dream of a modern, thriving Guyana would remain just that, a dream, flickering on and off like an unstable light bulb. The trigger for this radical change came in 2015. That's when massive oil fields were discovered offshore, launching Guyana onto the world stage. Suddenly, this small country of less than 800,000 people was sitting on one of the biggest new oil finds in the world. It's been nothing short of transformational. GDP per capita skyrocketed from around $6,900 in 2020 to over $15,000 in just three years. By the end of the decade, Guyana could become the world's largest oil producer per person, with government oil revenues projected to reach between $7.5 and $10 billion a year. This flood of money gave Guyana a once-in-a-lifetime chance to fix its biggest problems, 
And right at the top of that list was the energy crisis. For the first time, the country had the cash to think big, to imagine a future free from expensive imported fuel and blackouts. But the solution wasn't just in the oil, it was in what came with it. Along with all that crude oil, there's natural gas. For years, this gas was just a byproduct, with most of it either pumped back underground or burned off. But the government saw a better use for it. They pictured capturing this gas, which was basically a free resource, and piping it to the shore to generate electricity. This was the start of the Gas to Energy, or GTE, project. A multi-billion dollar plan to completely change how Guyana powers itself. The idea is simple, but brilliant. Take a resource from the offshore Liza projects that's being wasted and use it to fuel a brand new modern power plant on the coast. This wouldn't just be cheaper and cleaner, it would build a whole new industry for the country. The Gas to Energy project is a massive job, and it's easiest to think of it in three main parts. The total cost is estimated to be over 2 billion US dollars, which gives you an idea of just how huge and complex it is. First, there's the pipeline. Built by ExxonMobil Guyana, this 225 kilometer pipeline is an incredible piece of engineering. It stretches from the Liza Destiny and Liza Unity production vessels in the deep waters of the Stabrook block, across the ocean floor, and comes ashore on the west coast of Demerara. This pipeline is the project's main artery, designed to carry about 50 million cubic feet of natural gas every day in its first phase. The pipeline alone cost around 1 billion US dollars and is already finished, filled with nitrogen as it waits to be connected to the facilities on shore. The second part is the integrated facility at Wales, on the west bank of Demerara. This is where the raw gas from the pipeline will get processed. The site will have two key pieces, a natural gas liquids, NGL, processing plant, and a 300 megawatt, MW, power plant. The NGL plant will process the gas, separating out valuable liquids like propane and butane. Those can be sold for cooking gas or exported, creating a whole new source of income. The leftover dry gas will then be piped directly to the power plant next door. This 300 megawatt plant is a combined cycle facility, meaning it uses four advanced gas turbines and two steam turbines working together for maximum efficiency. The construction of this facility, managed by the US-based company Linzaika, is the heart of the project, turning raw gas into power and other valuable products. But a pipeline and a power plant are useless if you can't get the electricity to the people. That brings us to the third, and maybe the most important part, the transmission and distribution network. This is the project's nervous system, and it's where Guyana is making its $422 million surge. For the gas to energy project to work, it needs a modern, tough, and reliable electrical grid that can handle all that new power. The current grid, the Demerara Berbice Interconnected System, DBIS, just isn't built for it. As Prime Minister Mark Phillips put it bluntly, if you don't have a proper backbone, the whole system will not work. Realizing this, the government launched the single largest investment in the history of Guyana Power and Light. In April 2025, contracts worth a total of $422.2 million were signed with two global companies, Power China and India's Kalpataru Projects International Limited. This huge investment is all about building that proper backbone. The project is split into three parts with Power China handling two for $256.7 million and Kalpataru taking the other for $156.5 million. Their job is to build a massive new network of high voltage lines and substations, and they have just one year to get it done. The scale of this upgrade is mind-boggling. The work includes building 155 kilometers 230 kilovolt double circuit transmission lines and another 167 kilometers of 69 kilovolt lines. To give you an idea, 230 kilovolt lines are like the superhighways of the electrical grid, moving large amounts of power over long distances. 
The 69 kilovolt lines are the main roads, sending that power to local areas. Along with the lines, the project includes building five new substations in key spots. La Bonne Intention, LBI, Enmore, Trafalgar, Williamsburg, and East Berbice. Another critical substation at Kingston will also get a major upgrade. These substations are the hubs of the grid. They act like interchanges, stepping down the high voltage power to lower voltages that can be sent to homes and businesses. The new 230 kilovolt line will link a new substation being built for the GTE project to the new one at Williamsburg, creating a powerful energy corridor. This isn't just about adding new parts, it's a complete redesign of the grid. Guyana's old network was built with a lot of dead ends, meaning one fault on a line could knock out power for everyone down the line. The new network is being built as a true loop with what's called N plus one redundancy. In simple terms, it means for every important piece of equipment, there's a backup. This will make the grid dramatically more reliable. This $422 million surge is the missing link. The infrastructure that will let the 300 megawatts of power from Wales get out safely and reliably to every part of the grid, finally ending the era of the blackout nation. The whole point of this massive project is to revolutionize life in Guyana. The first thing everyone is waiting for is the huge drop in electricity costs. The government has repeatedly set a target of cutting power tariffs by 50% thanks to the switch from expensive oil to free natural gas. That's not a small tweak, it's a total game changer. For a typical family, it could mean thousands of dollars in savings every year. For the country, it's estimated that this could put about 20 billion Guyanese dollars back into people's pockets, freeing up money to be spent in the local economy. For businesses and industries, the impact is expected to be even bigger. High electricity costs have always been a major reason why companies were hesitant to invest in Guyana. Slashing those costs is set to supercharge industrial growth, making everything from manufacturing to farming more competitive. The Wales Development Zone, where the power plant is located, is planned to become a new industrial hub, with cheap, reliable power attracting new businesses. There are already plans to use some of the gas to supply a fertilizer plant, which could dramatically lower costs for farmers and give the agricultural sector a huge boost. On top of that, the project will produce a lot of natural gas liquids. Phase 1 is expected to generate around 4,000 barrels per day of NGLS, like propane and butane, which are used for cooking gas. This will not only make cooking gas cheaper for households, but could also turn Guyana from an importer to an exporter of these products, creating yet another source of revenue. Beyond the money, having stable, reliable power is essential for national development. Prime Minister Mark Phillips has said the GTE project is key to supporting the growth of new housing, schools, and hospitals. It will also free up government funds to be spent on other national priorities. Environmentally, the project is a big step up. While natural gas is a fossil fuel, it burns much cleaner than the heavy fuel oil currently in use. The switch is projected to cut greenhouse gas emissions from power generation by as much as half. A project this big is bound to have some challenges. The GTE project's total cost has climbed to over 2 billion US dollars, and it's hit a few snags. It was originally supposed to be finished in 2024, then got pushed to 2025. The latest official timeline now puts the full completion date in the second quarter of 2026. These delays have come from different issues, like problems with soil at the Wales site and contract disputes that had to be sorted out. But despite the setbacks, there's real progress. As of September 2025, the entire project was reported to be 68% complete, with the 300 megawatt power plant itself at 78% completion. The gas pipeline is done and ready to go, and the new transmission lines are almost finished. The focus now is on the hardest part, finishing the huge concrete foundations for the turbines at the Wales site and getting all the pieces to work together. The contractor is on an aggressive 120-day timeline to get the foundation work done, bringing in more workers to hit the new deadlines. The government is also thinking even bigger, 
While phase one is still being built, plans for phase two of the gas to energy project are already moving forward. The government has asked for proposals for a second power plant, which could add another 250 to 300 megawatts of power. This second phase would use the rest of the pipeline's capacity and would come with another NGL facility, nearly doubling the project's output of both electricity and gas liquids. Seven bids from companies around the world were received for this second phase, showing there's a lot of interest in partnering with Guyana on its energy future. The story of Guyana's $422 million transmission project is the story of a nation racing to modernize its energy system. Rising steel towers and high-voltage cables symbolize more than just a grid upgrade. They represent ambition, linking offshore resources to homes, schools, and industries. This marks a shift from shortages and limits to abundance and opportunity. Through a 225-kilometer pipeline, a new power plant at Wales, and a modern national grid, Guyana is building a new energy reality. Backed by oil wealth and natural gas, this project could transform the nation. But can Guyana deliver? Share your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe for more stories.